don't go away. You won't want to miss this episode of Doggy Dilemmas. You're going to meet Benny, a seven pound Yorkie that's very ferocious. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years experience training dogs and people. If you've got a doggy dilemma, Denise can help. Welcome to another episode of Doggy Dilemmas. Tonight you're going to meet Heather and Clive and their dog Benny, who is a seven pound Yorkie, has done a lot of damage biting people. Heather's even tried something that she's seen on another TV show, only to discover that it has exacerbated the situation exponentially. So let's go inside, meet Heather and Clive, and get to know Benny. Okay, let's, um, Let's go over the particulars of Benny. What kind of dog is he? How old is he? How long you've had him? And we'll get some history on him. Um, when did when did we get him? He's about fif 15, 15 months. months. Yep. About 15 months. Um, and wait, what was the other question? He's neutered. He's a he's, Yorkie. He's neutered. He's a Yorkie, although we have been told by the veterinarian that we think he might be part Dotson. Okay. Um, but for the most part... Um, he's a long Yorkie. Yeah, he's, he's a sort of bit, on the longer side. Yeah, he's a okay. little bit longer. Okay. And um, where did you acquire him from? Um, we got him in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, New York, mm -hmm. um, at a at a pet store. Okay. Great. And um, so let's. And you've had him for his entire life, fifteen mm -hmm. months. So he's in the throes of adolescence. Right. And let's outline what have, what are the issues? What like what's your primary issue that you're having with Benny? <coughs> Uh, he's a sociopath. <laughs> sociopath. Okay. <laughs> Doggy sociopath. I mean, for the most part, he's he's really sweet. He, um, you know, he doesn't he doesn't bark a lot mm -hmm. uh, unless a mailman comes by, and uh, you know, he's friendly enough with people. It's just that he has another side to him. Okay. He, uh, if he's in his crate. You know, he likes his crate. He's his, it's his, 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 it's his little house. Mm -hmm. um, and when he's inside the crate, he doesn't like anybody to come near the crate. So he just kind of starts growling and showing teeth, and then will he will never really exit the crate, but he will um, come to the very edge and just look like he's about to bite you. Okay. Um, so is this is this like when when do you put him in the crate? Like when do you? He use goes the crate? in by himself. He goes in by himself when this happens. He no no. He intermittently during the day, he will just decide. Okay, I want to go into my crate. Okay, and then. And if someone happens to walk by, like we had the crate here, so this is a thoroughfare here. People right. want to walk past. Every time anybody okay. walks past, regardless of who they are, demon sounds come from the crate. Okay. And if you approach the crate further than just walking past it mm -hmm. then that accelerates and he's going to go on full on like, but the door is open the door is open but even if the door was closed it would also happen it's not it's about so interesting that he'll do like he'll choose to go in there and then the door is open he could easily come out but right. he doesn't okay um, it's but it's it but it's like and when two minutes door... earlier sorry two minutes earlier you were petting him your best of friends Mm -hmm. He goes in the crate. You're his mortal enemy. <laughs> um, you know, it's like this. It's like a sociopath dog. Yeah. He doesn't completely. know you anymore. Yeah, okay. he's like you're, you're, you know. But so what? What I do is during the day, I close the crate because if he can't get into it, he can't guard it, and then he doesn't Good. freak out. You know? Okay. But the problem is, is at night, you know, he, we still put him in the crate, mm -hmm. um, and if the door is closed. Same thing. I mean, we'll we'll put we'll put a blanket over the crate to kind of say good night. Mm -hmm. um, and if you walk by the crate, even with the blanket on, mm -hmm. he will start growling and to the point where he's biting at the wires wow. of the crate. Okay. Yeah. But that's not all. <laughs> that's not all his issues. That's not all the issues. No, that's okay. that's actually probably the minor. Okay. Minor <laughs> part of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we'll, um, what I hope is, so do you think if during the course of this we put him in there and close the door, he'll behave in that fashion? 
Uh, Good. Possibly, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll play around a little bit that because I do want to show you how we'll start to modify that behavior. It's, you know, it's funny because what, you know, what is he, five pounds, eight pounds? Mm. Seven, I think. Seven pounds. So it's, it's always funny, but he's, if I remember correctly from our phone call, he's, he has drawn blood on, for yes. the other issues that we're going to talk about. And, you know, if he were any other size dog, this would be a, you know, an extremely serious issue. And the crate behavior is very modifiable, and, and we'll work on that a little bit today, too, before we go. So, but let's finish outlining. Um, is he house trained? He is house trained. Okay, good. And he is neutered. And he's neutered. Okay. Okay, so we've got the fact that he resource guards his crate, and, but that's not the primary, primary issue. I mean, the primary issue is that when you drop something, mm -hmm. he immediately will go for that object that's been dropped. Thank you. Um, and if you try to take it away from him, or he even suspects that you may take it away from him, mm -hmm. he again gets incredibly vicious. Okay. And, um, and we have had occasions where people have then reached down to try to pick it up and he, he bites. Okay. Um, and on one occasion, he certainly drew blood from a, from a friend of ours. Okay. So that was kind of the catalyst that made us realize that this is just, we need to deal with this. Right, right. We need to deal with this. Okay. So let's make a list of, of would you say that, I'd like to make a list of the things that he resource guards. And then the second part of that question is, does he resource guard anything that's dropped? Yes, everything. So just about anything that you drop he'll guard. His main thing is he follows people around because he knows that eventually someone's going to drop something. <laughs> and as soon as it does, it's his. Mm -hmm. And or he wants it. Okay. And, you know, and he's clever enough to know there's a difference between things that are toys and things that are... His, his toys, you mean? His toys that we play with. Like, if I throw down his little rubber thing... Mm -hmm. Then I go to pick it up from him. He's not going to bite me because he enjoys. I'll tug, we'll tug at it, and then okay. I'll throw it, and he'll run at it. And that's so. There's five or six objects that are kind of like understood to be toys, and they're not points of aggression. Funny. But okay. if I drop <clears throat> a pen, a pen or a pencil, for instance, I'm using writing something, and I drop my pen. He's in the proximity. He hears something hit the ground. He's in like a bullet. Okay. And. Um, I have probably like a quarter of a second to get that pen <laughs> before he does. And if he gets it before I do, then, you know, either I want to, you know, I've, what I usually do at that point is if Heather's around, I'll ask her to call him. Okay. And then he'll go to her and then I'll get the pen. The alternative is that I have to go and get the oven mitts. Mm -hmm. Put them on my hands, go down there, <laughs> and we're going full on. You know, he's and just and just duel it out and and. Uh, yeah, and his his thing is like you know he's not he's not messing around like he is right. now at the point. I'm going to inflict maximum damage on you. I right. will like bite your hands as much as I possibly can. Right. That's right. You know. Okay. Or he'll bite your feet. That's the other thing. So okay. if you so if you're if you've dropped something and you and you know we don't tend to go and pick things up now because we we like trained. our fingers right we've been <laughs> right. trained right. by him not to not to try to get it back but even if your feet are in the proximity of that object mm -hmm. that's still an appendage that for him is threatening and he will then he'll chase your feet he'll though, chase so. your feet yeah. like he'll okay. actually go and try to bite at your feet okay okay so have you tried to do anything to correct the resource guarding of drop stuff yet? Not correct. Circumnavigate. Okay, so you're just managing and managing. trying to get in and get out. Like if I it? pick up his lead, for instance, mm -hmm. right? He loses complete interest in the thing he has. He's jumping up. We're going for a walk. We're going for a walk. Okay. Right? So then I can run in and get the thing, throw the lead down, and then go back to whatever I was doing. Okay. You okay. know? Okay. Um, but, but, so, all right, so that's fine. So, I mean, it's human nature, even with a small dog like Benny, to, to preserve, and, you know, and to stay safe. And there's some sort of 
um, primitive thing that happens to us where we're like, okay, well, we need to avoid this behavior. <laughs> Here he comes. <laughs> avoid this behavior at all, at all costs. So, okay. Now, what I want to... Benny! Hey, you just said you didn't bark that much. Benny, Benny, Benny! Benny. I'll go hold him. Here. Oh, here he comes. Oh, come here, Benny. Pick him up, Hunter. Come on. You have a little piece of treat. We can just put him up on the couch. Benny. <laughs> Benny. <laughs> Benny. <laughs> hey. Why don't you try calling him, and then he can have these when he gets up on the couch. Well, leader dogs have discovered some <laughs> rat or something. Benny. <laughs> I'll go over and go. Come on, come on. Come on, Come on, Benny. Benny. Says you have something. <laughs> That's right. So, so let me just address the resource guarding in terms of um, how. When did you first notice it? Like, has this been going on since he was a puppy? Uh, pretty, not immediately. Not like as soon as we got him. Okay. Um, but probably. I don't know, maybe like a few months after we got him. Okay. Um, so you I mean, got him about eight weeks, ten weeks? Yeah, I would say, oh gosh. The first summer that we were here in New Hampshire, there was nothing. I mean, he was the sweetest okay. dog. He didn't bark, he didn't do any, I mean. And had you just gotten him at that point in time? Uh, at that point, he was probably about five to six months old. Okay. Um, I would say it was probably that following Christmas. Okay. So maybe, you know, 11 months Okay. Um, is when we really started to notice. And that was also around the time we were thinking we need to, we, we certainly need to, um, we thought, we hadn't gotten him neutered yet, so we thought, okay, we, we need to mm -hmm. go get him neutered. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to take care of the aggression issues. Mm -hmm. um, we got him neutered and then it just, it didn't subside. Okay. You know, he continued to be aggressive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we... So being about 11 to 12 months. Wouldn't you say? Sounds, sounds about right. Okay. So what's important to remember about resource guarding is developmentally it can kick in. Eh, 12 months is a little bit early, but for a smaller dogs, sometimes those things happen sooner. So developmentally, if you're going to see a dog resource guard that hasn't shown it as a puppy, which is a much more serious issue than... You'll see it at about his age, right. adolescence. So he's sort of right on target with that. It's very interesting that he won't guard toys or because you would think that the toys are his and that if he was going to guard something, it would be those clearly defined objects that are doggy play toys and things right. that are his. And instead, he's guarding things but that you guys But the toys have. are part of a ritual. And the ritual right. is that we play a tug of war and then I throw the toy, he runs, he brings it back. Right. And so, then we do it again. So that's, sure. you know. He, he gets reinforced. He's enjoying it. He loves it, yeah. Right, you right. Know. But they would still, it's still from like sort of my dog training perspective, they would, the door, there'd be his toys. Do we need to take right. We can stop if you need yeah, to. Yeah, do we hold on. Yeah, you need to go. Yeah. Sorry. He's <laughs> cute. I'm telling you, he you need. He looks like a killer, right? <laughs> you need a small dog. Is this just something he does with her dad? Or does he uh, treat it's other people? A new, I mean, see. <laughs> Stop. That's worth seeing again. Benny has zero tolerance for frustration. When Clive doesn't let him off his lap, Benny first head flips towards Clive. That's the first indication that he's thinking of biting him. Then when Clive withdraws his hand, he pursues his hand, comes over his face, and goes up his other arm. Just so you know, Clive was not hurt during this, and Benny never actually made contact. Stop. Go in. Get off. That's because I was trying to stop him. And yes. he just wants to go up and kind of like jump up and greet him. Yes, but although when he was walking through, he was going after his leg. So yeah, I that's mean, a, that's, but, a I mean big, him, that's a big dose of redirection, though, onto what, what just happened to you. Yeah, well, I was trying to stop him from doing something he wanted to do. Yes, so yeah. He, you know. But he didn't just turn around and say, knock it off. Yeah. I mean. He chased my yeah. hands. Yeah, yeah. So he's a little psycho. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, you know, and the thing about it is, well, my number one 
concern with all this is like, you know, I can put up with this stuff because he's our dog. Mm -hmm. A stranger, like, it's a whole different. Right. You know? And if, if I remember right, you guys bring them with you to people's houses in Brooklyn. There was an Easter egg or yes. something or other. Can yeah. you describe that? What happened then? Um, basically, you know, it was a, a large group of friends. It was a backyard barbecue and it was around Easter time. And uh, the friend had taken those plastic eggs and filled them with some chocolate and mm -hmm. hid them all over the, the yard. And Benny found one of them, mm -hmm. and it was filled with chocolate. So immediately, you know, one of our friends went, oh, no, he's, he, right. he's having chocolate. Right. And went down to reach to get the egg, and he, he probably went into about a five-minute or more attack of mm -hmm. pretty much everyone. Mm -hmm. And it was one of these things, and he, you know, he, he certainly bit our friend's foot, he bit, he bit me, mm -hmm. um, because I kind of, like, had everyone, like, evacuate him mm -hmm. so that I could try to get the egg away again because it was chocolate so I kind of thought you know this is really not good for him right I need to get this away from him and you know I I got bit there right. was no doubt about it right and you know with our one friend when he bit he definitely drew blood most of the time you know he doesn't draw blood but he you know there's definite imprints in your hand right and right. it's sore yes yeah. is there bruising yeah there's definitely bruising. yeah I mean bruising can be just as bad as a as a wound, as a puncture right. or an open wound, it still applies. There's a, a lot of pressure. Yeah, a lot of pressure. So, so we've got three issues now. We've got the resource guarding of the crate, which is minor and easily modifiable. We have the um, no tolerance to being restrained. You know, when when there's something that he wants to do, and you're saying no, you can't do that. Right. Mm. Um, with a lot of redirection, like you said, he just he sustains it and carries on with that, and it's. It's great that he's neutered because unneutered dogs can can sustain that even longer. Right. Um, but that's still pretty intense in that you guys are his people. You feed him. You care for him. You supply him with right. everything he needs. And so to to redirect in a sustained fashion like that is pretty in, is pretty intense and worrisome. Mm. So um, the resource guarding uh, we'll take a look at that is is more easily modifiable than, than that. But I think one of the goals is going to be to try to get him to tolerate a little bit of frustration. I don't know that we'll get him to tolerate a lot of frustration. Right. Um, and, um, you know, we can try to get him so that he won't resource guard from others as well. That, right. that dropped items will mean something different to him. Yeah. So <clears throat> let me explain what resource guarding is because there's a lot of misunderstanding about it and there's a lot a lot of times people throw around the, the words dominance and he's dominating me or controlling me or whatever and resource guardian is about um, it's about priorities and motivation and what what's important to the dog so toys aren't that important but everything else is and so with with resource guardian the example Okay, so this is one of his toys. We're all sort of safe here. Yep, we're completely safe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this has been brought to us so that we will play with him. Right. right. So, does, sorry, so, I, can, yep. so he, I can grab this He does head, this, yeah. And I can, I can play with him, and I can go like this. And, um, and Heather, does he have any sort of out or give command, or do you just um, wait? Until I've been trying to practice that with him. Okay. So I can say let go, but it doesn't always work. I mean, okay. let go, let go, let go. No. See, it, sometimes it was working for a while, and then... So, sometimes, and I'm not going to ask you to do this, but sometimes what we can do when we're teaching this to a dog is to hold their collar so they uh -huh. can't play tug anymore, and then when they give the toy back, when they give the toy to you, you'll throw it, and that will be their reinforcement. Right. With his microscopic level of tolerance for, for frustration, I'm not going to have you grab his collar. Right. Let me hear treats again. So, we'll just make a quick trade. But then I want to go on. So put it, when he doesn't get it until he opens his mouth. So I can look at you. Oh, good boy. So you could label let go. Let go. Now, does he have a sit good command or anything? Yep. Yeah. Ask him to sit. Sit. But now you can. And I could even have him lie down. That's fine. Good. Lie down. Oh, good. <laughs> Short lived, but yeah. Good. Good. Okay. So the example I like to give about resource guarding is I like chocolate desserts and I have three daughters. So. If I'm having my chocolate dessert, they're all, you know, sort of around with their forks waiting to get some. And I'm having an emotional response of no, and I'm going to cover with my arm, you know, to make it really exaggerated. Maybe I've got my knife up, you know, but I'm going to protect it. I'm going to guard it. I'm going to keep it as mine. 
and they, it's, a, it's clearly an emotional thing that's happening. So if they wanted to change my emotional response, then they would have to stay some safe distance away from me so they didn't get stabbed by the knife. And chocolate dessert, um, they'd have to throw me probably $100. And I'd probably look at them and say, mm, I don't quite trust what's happening, so thanks for the 100 but I'm going to keep the dessert. Maybe another one, another one, you kind of get the idea. They're going to continue to pay me until they sort of see my emotional response start to relax. I'll take my hand down, I'll pick up the fork and not the knife. And then when I, until finally when they come in, oh, now I'm anticipating the hundreds of dollars coming my way. So I'll say, here, take the dessert because I'd rather have your hundreds of dollars. But initially, because I'm already in this hunkered down mode, no, I'm not going to relinquish it. I don't, I don't know the game, I don't trust you, I, so I'm still right here in resource guarding. So clearly, that's where Benny gets in the crate, and that's where Benny gets with dropped items. And to go in, so, so let's say um, I'm you know, in hunker down mode, resource guarding. Duke comes along and sort of you know, forces me back, and then the dessert gets taken away. Okay, it doesn't change my emotional response. Now, I don't trust him, and I'm really going to try to, I gotta, you know, now I've got to find a better way to protect yeah. my dessert. You know, so, so the emotional response is intensified. And we as humans have this incredible desire to just, oh, like it's a dog, I've got to just take it from him. Like I've got to assert my dominance. I mean, it's more of a people thing than a dog thing, um, which just exacerbates the entire situation. Now, that, just like the example I get, gave you, now he doesn't trust you, now he has to guard it even better. So. The, the trick with resource guarding is to <clears throat> establish a safe distance that we can be from him without getting, we don't want to elicit the growling behavior, and, and that may or may not be possible since he tends to yeah. even go after feet, which are in his area, which I want to talk about in a minute. But we're going we're gonna to just hang out and drop stuff for him, okay. roast beef, cheese, whatever we've got. And never, like especially if it's a tissue, I don't care if it's a tissue, it's not going to harm him in any way. He can, he can eat the tissue. And, we're, and the goal is not to take things away initially. The goal is to change that emotional response first. Once the emotional response has been changed, then we could do what we call, we could add an operant behavior if we wanted to. We could, so now you drop something. He's like, oh, you dropped something. Where's my food? Where's my food? He's totally into the new game that's being played. Then we can say, okay, Benny, now we'd like you to sit. That would be the operant piece that comes in. Sit, you take the tissue, and then he gets a toy or he gets a treat or something else, but really changing that whole thing around. Um, and so I think, I think I remember you, Heather, saying that you, uh, well, let's, um, what normally happens with resource guarding, and we'll make a switch here and put a tissue down and <laughs> take this toy, is if he were there with the tissue, your feet and anything else in his immediate proximity would all be okay because they were there along with him. And then if I walked into the picture, I would then be the threat. And I think what I remember last time was that he was, he'll go after your feet even when they're there already. Yeah, and I think, right. that, I think I'd mentioned to you on the phone that I think that was a problem that I actually might have caused. Um, I don't know if I can mention yeah, it. Yeah, it's fine. Say I, well, I, I, was want watching, you, I want you to. <laughs> I was watching the dog whisper when this right. started to happen. And he was talking about resource guarding, and I right. thought, that's, that's our problem. Right. And... Um, and he had this episode where it was a small dog, and that dog was protecting its toys, and he would come, he came over and just would step on the toy mm -hmm. to kind of, again, I think dominance, to mm -hmm. show that this is my toy, I, I, I own it, right. you know, it's mine over yours. Right. And then in the program, it was miraculous, the dog whimpered, calmed mm -hmm. down, he was able to pick up the toy. So I started to do the same thing, mm -hmm. where if he got paper or if he got... A pen, I would immediately step on the pen or the paper thinking that that was going to work. And it, it really, it really didn't. Okay. It didn't work. So now he goes after feet. So now, now he goes after feet. So I think that that was something right. that I trained him. Right, right. You can, we can successfully train dogs to resource guard by always taking things away from them and never making a trade. He just inherently resource guards things that are dropped, so it has nothing to do with that. Um, but it is, it's an excellent point that that's part of the, 
misunderstanding about what resource guarding is and how to properly treat it. And, um, you know, we just, all of a sudden we have to have that object. So let's um, take that away. Can I have another piece of <laughs> And we'll, wow. Okay, we've got like a seven pound dog that's a seven pound tree. Let's just, can we hide this or put this someplace yeah. where he won't be focused Benny. on it anymore? Benny. Benny. You can have that. Mm -hmm. And then, and if you just sort of throw it out, maybe he'll turn around and. Oh, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, we'll just let him. Now we're. Course, there's chicken in the picture, so I know, right? And he is food Do you want motivated. To no, it's just we'll just wait and see what happens with the All tissue. Right. Really, Benny, maybe if I push it closer to you. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now he's in full. Anyone so who goes if, near if him, you move now. your foot, Clive, does he go after that? Yeah, he will, yeah. I'm not going to use my hand, like, and can I pat you? <laughs> Maybe. Look, my hand's rolling around. <laughs> now the tissue is in multiple pieces, so he's got a real, a real issue on um, yeah. the guard it. Right. Guarding it all. Right. <clears throat> and so it's, you know, it wasn't. It didn't really affect him until I pushed pushed it a little bit closer to him. But it is. So there's not a, a lot of dogs will just bite and be done with it, like boop, when they're done with it, or they'll take the thing and go away. He right. still has that choice to take it and go away, and he doesn't. So right. now it's mine. I'm going to stay here. And <coughs> now so now it's just movement. Just for a reminder, the reason we're here is because Benny resource guards anything that's dropped, but he has a particular affinity to dropped tissues. As we watch this, Benny bites the hand multiple times, then he tracks the hand. That means he's watching it with his eyes very carefully, wanting to know where the hand is all the time. Then he bites it again and lunges at the arm. This is a very serious situation. And it's the same whether it's um, a tissue or the, the a pen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just want to turn my back. I think he's going to eat the tissue. So he may not leave the tissue too. He has a particular fondness for tissues. Yeah. <laughs> he likes ripping them up. So would you say that the tissues are the biggest... Um, well, not the we, right, the, what he guards the most. I mean, a very high priority to him would be tissues. Uh, but, but I mean, you said you drop pens and pencils. Pens and, and pencils. I either. mean, it, it, it's, and then, and it was, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is, really. He does particularly like tissues, likes to rip them up. But apples, pencils, pens, anything that's small enough for him to get into his mouth. What's bizarre is that now he's left the tissue in. Mm -hmm. But I'm not so sure that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you picked it up, you would do that. All right. Well, I want to get the tissue off the floor. So let's um, let's do a bait and switch. Can <laughs> I'm going to use you to bring them over here with with some chicken. This is going to be my little shield. Okay. Yeah, now he's not even. No, I mean, chicken should certainly overrule tissue. tissue. <laughs> but one never knows. So there's a, there's a new. Did he get it all? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. No, he doesn't seem to care about the apple now. No, he only was caring about the apple when we were cutting him this morning and peeling him. All right, so maybe throw, <coughs> I don't, still don't trust him, throw something over there so I can get the piece of apple. 
so the li so I was one of the things I want to do was make a list of the things that he guards. I've got a pretty good idea, and um, but let's just we definitely have tissue on the top of the list. Pens and pen pens. Pens, pencils. Any other paper things that are a priority to him? Um, I mean, I'm a teacher, so a lot of times during the school year, I will have papers that I'm grading mm -hmm. um, for doing bills, envelopes, you know, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, certainly enjoys ripping them. Uh, toilet paper, if he's able to get toilet paper out of the bathroom. I mean, for the most part, we've, you know, again, He's training us, like we're do dog proofing our bathroom mm -hmm. so that he can mm -hmm. access paper for the most part. But ideally, you know, it should be the other way around, hopefully. Right. And so <coughs> if he's able to get toilet paper, he will jump up onto our bed, tear it to shreds, and God forbid anyone that wants to try to get that away. So that's, okay. that's a problem. Okay. And then the bed becomes, the, whole, the bed itself becomes his. His. So the because bed the toilet paper is there, or I mean, or only when the toilet paper is there, or other times. Sometimes, occasionally, like when I've been, I work from home sometimes, and he's on the bed, and I walk past, and the next thing, the bed becomes the crate. It's oh, like, okay. You know. Okay. I mean, everything and anything. I mean, mm -hmm. basically, yeah, there's, he there's enjoys, he loves getting things, and ripping them up, mm -hmm. and he loses interest in them after about five minutes. Okay. Um, once he's ripped them up. He destroyed, um, our friend got a, a new stereo mm -hmm. speaker system and he got a hold of the iPod or the, um, the remote control. Oh. And no, granted that was found after the fact that he had gotten it and mm -hmm. destroyed it. But, um, I'm assuming that if somebody had tried to get the yeah. remote away from him, that would have been resource guarded. Right. Um, my shoes, my shoes have been... Okay. Um, a major contender for... Particularly the high heel ones. Yes, high heels in particular. He likes to gnaw on the heel. Okay. Um, and I try <coughs> to get those away. <laughs> Undergarments. Um, yeah. So the list goes on and it just, the, 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 the common thread is anything that he gets. Yeah, socks. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's not interested in things that are too big for him to carry. So it has to be in Benny scale. <laughs> right, but, right. Um, well, except for the bed and the crate and things like that, then that's a little Well, location. yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. But that's a different form of... Right, right. That's territory rather than objects. Yep. And what about, um, there was a chair. Is there a chair here that he guards, but not at your home in Brooklyn? No. No, I mean, what he typically does in, when we're in Brooklyn is that we... Both of our couches, you can crawl under them. So when he gets an object, he will run under, okay. under one of the couches, um, and that's really where, you know, he really he knows that you can't get this. Mm -hmm. He can tear up the toilet paper or the tissue as much as he wants, mm -hmm. and and if you <laughs> want to try to get it out, it means that you have to put your arm underneath. Right. I mean, a, a typical thing with Benny is that we're all sitting around here and we're having. A, you know, whatever, we're hanging out. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> somebody inadvertently draws, um, drops a uh, tissue. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody's paying attention to Benny, but he's paying attention to us. We right. don't know it, right? Now, what he'll do is he knows that he shouldn't have that. So he'll make an exit with this thing mm -hmm. straight away, mm -hmm. growling as he goes, anticipating. Right, the hot pursuit that's going to be happening. The hot pursuit, right? Right. Like, you know, he's like, and then it all goes from there. Right, right, especially if it goes under the bed or something. Under the, and then under, okay. the <coughs> under the sofa, he's kind of leveled the playing field because mm -hmm. the only way he can get in. Right, and right, right. And then you got to get the oven mitts and Kevlar or something <laughs> or the broom. Kev, to the riot, the riot gear. <laughs> or let him, just, let him just have it. So just out of curiosity, um, can we get, I brought some yummy things in here. Let's just see if he'll guard any of those, which probably you won't, but, or maybe they're too big. Should we open his crate? Under Phil trade to take it into the crate. <laughs> Everybody be careful in here. Yeah, see, this is really weird. 
that right. he didn't. So, so you let him have it a little bit longer. The, no, because it's the, harder. The thing about it is, is that what you've done there is because you gave it to him. That's now a toy. What do you think? I think so. Yeah, because well, if I go outside and I find a stick, mm -hmm. and I get the stick, mm -hmm. and then he bites on the stick, we've built up this relationship that we're going to start playing with the stick now. Right. The stick is going to become a toy, and you're going to start. We're just going to start wrestling for it, and then going to throw it, and you're going to mm -hmm. go and get it. We can do that for hours. But it's the initiation of how he got the object. Yeah, that's an inter interesting point. You know? Because this is a bully stick, which is usually pretty high value. I think you're going to be in a better... <laughs> Sorry, if you can just reach. Who's that? I don't know. Hi. Can you go and... Oh god, we're gonna have an issue with the dogs. Do we have a what? The owner of the house is not here. What's That's the question? Right. A I'm sure walking around, around but that bully day. stick may cause an issue with what the What address are you looking for? <laughs> Automatic. No, we took it. Oh, okay. Away. Okay, well, do you want to just go it's ahead and fill it up then? It's a bully stick, so. Yeah. Yeah. Moving it so the oil guy can get his truck down. Hey! 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 Hack it off! <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! Yeah. Put him here Stop. for a moment just to get him Stick out of the equation. Remember, dogs communicate through ritualized behavior. The ritualization is designed to solve conflict without a fight. Watch Finnegan's body language. He is very still, his tail is high, and he turns his head away from Benny. A head turn is an appeasement signal designed to end a conflict, and it works. Finnegan walks away. But Benny isn't okay, and the next thing we see is Benny launching after Finnegan. Benny's clearly still aroused about the tissue and the bully stick. He comes at Finnegan twice before Finnegan finally returns the aggression and goes after Benny. Neither dog was hurt. Do you want to call him over there? Or maybe he'll stay in his crate. Maybe he'll do his thing in his crate. Is that what you want? Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't know if, if we got that on tape or not, oh, but yeah. it, it, goes, it goes on, unfortunately, sometimes dog fights, but Mia was also then going to get involved as well. Right. I mean, it's not, I kind of relate it to, sorry, Duke, but adolescent boys where, you know, two guys are going to get in a fight and then everybody's going right. to yeah. either egg them on or do whatever. So, um, but it's not an issue that, that we need to address is right. my, because they don't always live together. And no, and that actually... It's never, ever happened before. That's never happened before. <laughs> Well, great. Glad, glad we could bring that out for you. Um, um, usually what happens is that when he starts to become, uh, when he starts to resource guard, actually all the other dogs will circle him and start barking at him to kind mm -hmm. of be like, not, you know, knock mm -hmm. it off. Um, but that's, yeah, that. Yep. So, um, if I remember from Clyde what you said, if we walk past the crate, he might resource guard. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he's going to do it right now. Um, and the other thing is that Benny was still sort of in a heightened state of, you know, the tissue had been down and the other right. things had been down. And um, from what I've seen from him, he doesn't necessarily come down from those things really quick. So, um, but well, he gets really agitated and he stays agitated. Yes, right. But the thing to remember is with all the food and things going around, when dogs have a fight, it can, it can really take days before it all sort of settles out. Oh, interesting. So just sort of be on alert that if you see any hairy, what I call the hard eye yeah. going back and forth. Like, I mean, you saw it really nicely with Finnegan over here. He was really stiff, and his ears were really up, and you're sort of describing him as alpha. Well, he was clearly telling Benny, you know, stay away. You know, I think I've told you this before. In a dog's life, it's about come closer. Yes, come closer. Or, Go away, go right. away, and this was all about go away, go away. But right. everybody was milling about, and it didn't happen. Um, so I'm just going to walk by and see if. So it's really only about when you think it's needed, huh? He doesn't look relaxed to me. His eyes are. Kind yeah, of you can see the white in his eyes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, he seems to be in a kind of, try, he's kind of like half in and half out right now. But you can kind of, oh, there we go. Yep. Go <laughs> Maybe it's just <Okay>. me. 
Did you give hence, him a lot? Hence the reason we call him. Did you give him a lot of eye contact? Yeah. So he's not eating these. But what, I would, what I'm going to have you do for the crate stuff is that anytime he goes in, you're going to just walk by and drop in $100 bills. And so right. I'm not sure what I just dropped in as $100 bills, but I think what you have is, can I have some of your chicken? No, he's eating it. Okay. Yeah, he's liking it. Right. Yeah. So the, and, you know, because we're set up with cameras, this is probably too close. Yeah. You know, we don't want to antagonize them or bring out the behavior. We just want to say, hey, the rules of the game are, ch play are changing now. You don't need to, what is this, last night's dinner? <laughs> you don't need to, um, you don't need to, you don't need to be all in this defensive mode and in this emotional state of guard, 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 because, hey, look, we're going to start dropping $100 bills in there. And I'm going to have you do this, Clyde, too, since you're sort of bringing it out in them. So you, you're going to walk by? Well, I think Clive can do it from sitting there since he was... So if, were you giving him a lot of eye contact? Yeah, I was looking at him, yeah. Okay, so when... I want you to give him some eye contact, wait until he stops eating, give him eye contact, and then just throw that in there. Don't stick it in there with your hand. I know, see, not... Yeah, he thinks this is... Now, he's not, um, he doesn't resource guard around his food dish. No. Okay. Not, un not unless you really hassle him, but it's not a problem. Okay. Okay. So he's still in a, you know, he's still sort of in a... Um, he has tails under. Yep, his tail's down. He's not, he's not aroused, but he's not necessarily relaxed. You know, he's sort of on the edge. Yeah. It's not a very technical term, but okay. Okay, so um, we'll talk about what we what we've talked about is Benny's going to come home with me for board and train <laughs> to get to move these issues along quicker. Um, the crate stuff is I'm not worried about that. That's going to be fairly easy, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to have to add eye contact to that because it seemed like that's what triggered him. Mm -hmm. wasn't necessarily my presence. And when dogs look at me, I don't necessarily make a lot of eye contact, so I'm trained not to do that. So we'll add that into it. The resource guarding piece, um, after he settles into the house for a couple of days, gets to know the other dogs, um, I will start this whole process with things that he's not guarding. Right. So I'm going to try to find, whether it's dog toys or his food dish or whatever, just to sort of teach him the, the new game that we're going to play. Hey, look, Benny, you know, I'm probably going to have to use $500. So most of his food is going to be distributed to him during training sessions because he's a little guy, and the sessions will have to be short because he'll fill up pretty quick. Um, the piece that will be harder, and I'm not going to guarantee that I can address it completely, is this extreme frustration and redirection. So that's something that um, you're still going to have to manage or, I mean, I'm going to, I will, once I have a relationship with him, it will be easier, mm -hmm. but you already have a relationship with him mm -hmm. and he's still quite happy to, you know, nail you up and down yeah. one side or the other. Um, but I can frustrate him by having him unleash and he can't do what he wants to do. Um, and when he starts to, to show me some calm, he'll get heavily reinforced for that. Um, that frustration and restraint equals good things for him instead of, hey, I can't do what I want to do, you know, let go of me. What's interesting as well is um, he, when I notice him getting more frustrated, sort of that frustration that you're talking about, is if um, in the evening, if we're sitting on the couch and he's on my lap mm -hmm. and Sorry. something changes, um, and something changes due to him being on the lap, whether or not it's being by sitting down or him the wrong way or you know or if he's sleeping and he gets woken up mm -hmm. you know whatever the case may be he might attack attack you so he'll be like this cute little sweet seven pound mm -hmm. dog you know lap dog and then you know two nights ago he was on my lap and the next thing I know he went for my hand and, and bit me and, and okay. I sort of thought okay that's it it's great so okay bedtime. so there's definitely um handling issues um mm -hmm. you know there may be a More part of it Right, and there may be a part of him, I mean, he's a pet store dog, they're not known for the, you know, the best breeding, and mm -hmm. um, he may be a little miswired. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to see 
we're going to prioritize those issues, which I think is the resource guarding right. is the first one. The second one, handling or crate? You put in priority, you mean? Right, because, right, because in three weeks' time, I don't, <clears throat> I'm not going to have enough time to address all of those issues. The, I mean, if I was to put his problems in a list of priority, I'd say that. <clears throat> um, the resource guarding as farmers of objects and so on mm -hmm. is, is probably number one. Okay. Number two is the handling. Um, and number three is the crate. Okay. Because the crate is just annoying, but it's not right. actually a threat because, you know, he's in his crate and he's not coming out to bite you. Right, right. Um, but, I mean, obviously it's not ideal, but, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I mean... When we're uh, thinking about him in relationship to other people that come into contact with him, probably mm -hmm. the two most important would be um, the resource guarding right. and handling. Right, because is he... Right. This, we kind of know he'll do this. This is right. the predictable part. Right. Um, yeah, and the handling is the weirdest bit of the three because the handling is where the unpredictability comes in. Mm -hmm. Like, you know that when he's in his crate, he's going to growl if you walk past. Right. You know that if you drop tissue on right. the ground, he's going to go for it. But he's on your lap and you're, you're rubbing him. And next thing, you know, because of some you know, variable that's known only to him. Right, right. That sometimes you tease him. Well, I, <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, well, let Clyde finish and then we'll hear about the teasing. <laughs> I don't tease him that much. I mean, like... Um, but, even, but in your defense, even if, I mean, people tease dogs all the time, but right. it doesn't mean that they should get the kind of biting that's happening here. Right. And the reaction. Yeah, no, he'll, I mean, when I say tease him, I mean, I'm just kind of like you, tapping his ears. You poke him. So, but if he's on, but what you described last night is he's on your lap, you're patting him, and he bites you, like right. out of the blue, apparently. I mean, apparently. he'll be kind of, but you, he might be teasing him. When he bites you? And then you know, like that's kind of an anomaly within the situation. I mean, the thing about it is, is that, like, he's on your lap, and right. a friend of ours is sitting beside you, and that friend goes to scratch her knee, mm -hmm. and he attacks her. So that's... You. No, the, the, friend, friend, the friend. The friend. Yeah, okay. So, like, I mean, that's the problem, right? Right, right. So then you sort of become right. the space that he's guarding almost in that situation. Right. But it doesn't describe. It doesn't explain. He's sitting on your lap and you pat him and then he bites you. Or like he'll be like he'll be like you know flicking his ear while he's. It still shouldn't elicit a bite. It shouldn't elicit a bite. I mean, you know, the dogs have choices. It's <laughs> it's he's like sleeping with his sort of sitting. It's fight or flight. Yeah. I could, you know, Clive's annoying me. Okay, I'm going to get off your lap and I'll and I'll go curl up in my cute little bed in the crate. Right. But he doesn't. Right. He chooses to fight. Right. Repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, is um, and that doesn't necessarily qualify him as a good candidate for passing on genetic code because the dogs that are always fighting are risking their life repeatedly. And the dogs that hightail it out of there and say, fine, I'm out, yeah. are much more likely to pass on genetic code. And it's, I mean, it's evolution, yeah. you know, shows that. So he's, um, he's got some miswiring going on as well. So we'll, we'll work on the resource guarding. We're gonna do some of the handling. Um, the crate stuff is gonna be easy anyway, so I'm not really overly worried about that. Okay. Um, and we'll have to add the, the foot you know, working with him not attack, that people's feet are also part of the package that right. presents the $500 that falls for him. Okay. Um, any questions you guys have or anything else? No. I just want to say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Yay. laughs> Benny, you were amazingly shocking today. <laughs> yeah, performed well, right? Yeah. Well, like I said, if he were a bigger dog, this issue would be, you know, it is serious. Yeah. It is serious. Um, it would be more serious mm -hmm. than, course, than yeah. it's a bigger, you know, it's a bigger dog. But, and, you know, the other dogs that are just here visiting, you've, they're all terriers. Right. Mm. And that's, there's a lot of energy there. Yeah. And a lot of tenacity, mm -hmm. which is why this fight sort of kept going and kept going and kept right. going. But usually what happens is that um, there's no aggro between the dogs. Mm -hmm. Basically, he's in love with Mia. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he doesn't really pay any attention to the other two. Mm -hmm. <coughs> what I can understand is, though, I can never really work out where Benny sees himself in the pack. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I sometimes think that Benny's a pack of one, like he's his own pack. Mm -hmm. And because um, I don't know where he is within the three of us, mm -hmm. me and him and Heather. And 
although Finnegan is the top dog within like those three dogs plus Benny, mm -hmm. he's kind of at the bottom, but it doesn't mean that he's submissive. Like he'll still <coughs> come out with the aggression mm -hmm. and then all the other dogs will reprimand him for, right. you know, not um, respecting the pecking order. Could be, could you, be. You know? and, and and that whole sort of pack thing um, fluctuates and adjusts. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is about deferring. Yeah. So if, if Benny were lying here with a toy and just one dog came in and Mia walked in, and you know, th there would be an exchange of communication. For example, Mia might look at Benny and, and Benny would say, oh, OK, fine. And he would defer to Mia and get up and walk away from, from the toy. That's not necessarily, you know, dominance and submission. But the next time, it could be Benny that says, not today, mm -hmm. and gives her the look or have some exchange happens, and Mia says, fine, and she defers to Benny. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in a, you know, in a household, there's one that's always deferring, mm -hmm. and, and there's one that's, that's, that just always gets it. Um, and the dominance thing happens most, like, most often in, a, in, a in, in an instant, in a point in time where... Um, I don't like what you did, and the other dog, you know, and they have some sort of altercation. And oftentimes, you know, if one dog sort of flips over, it's usually because they offer that behavior, not because they're forced into that position. And then it's done. Okay, we've established that for this particular instant. But the next time or the next situation could be completely different. So, so the pack thing can can evolve and change. Um, Benny is a pretty little independent guy. He doesn't live with these dogs all the time. Um, and, you know, and you really, you really just want harmony, not, right. not, you know, analyze it all the time. But I would just be aware that this type of intense of a dog fight, mm -hmm. um, they, they're not, they may not be over it when they come in. So you'll just have yep. to watch that sort of I mean, carefully. It's nice when, we're, when we do bring him to the dog park. Hi, baby. In New York. He gets along with, you know, every mm -hmm. dog. So he, we, we, you mm -hmm. know, we have never witnessed him right. having sort right. of any aggression towards other dogs right. when we're there. So, um, so typically that's not a problem. Right. Right. Okay. Well, like I said, we'd had the tissue and we had things on the floor right. and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we mo removed it them, but <laughs> it wasn't completely yeah. normal. Good. I mean, good. The thing is, he's essentially a sweet dog, you know, and he's really, mm -hmm. he's really a good dog, except for the fact that he has some weird stuff. I mean, right. I, like, because it seems that he's his own worst enemy, because he gets very agitated. Like, the mm -hmm. whole thing is very traumatic for him as well, when he's, right. you know, like, biting and snapping. And, right. You know what I mean? You can tell that he, he's kind of, like, panting, and he's, like, really, like, yeah, very worked very himself up yeah. into, a, into a frenzy, right. you know, and it's not, it doesn't seem to be a, particularly pleasant thing for him so no. it's kind of like well, he would have a lot more of a stress-free life if he wasn't always on the defensive and constantly right. feeling that he had to kind of like always be fighting you know right. for everything all the yeah, time yeah that's know? very stressful it's yeah. very stressful to 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 <clears throat> be in that mode all the time to be defending things or waiting for things to that he has to defend right. or whatever has to happen yeah Okay, I don't know about you, but my heart is still beating after that little display from Benny or the multiple displays from Benny. He's got multiple issues of aggression. The one I want to recap the most for you is the resource guarding, where when he gets a tissue or a pen or any dropped item, he hunkers down with it. And as you saw, he's very happy to come out away from the object and chase you away or to work up and down your arm. It's a very serious issue, resource guarding. And there's a very big myth that you need to get in there and force the object away. And as you can see, it's only going to make things worse. Heather's tried stepping on objects because she saw that on another TV show. And now all it's done is made Benny start to attack shoes and people's feet when they're in close proximity as well. The best thing to do if you have a dog with any aggression issue is to please call an expert to help so that you don't make it worse, but also understand that dogs are a different species, they think differently than we do, and you're not going to help by forcing the issue. We need to make it more worth their while to give us the item. We need to, we need to pay them and work some classical conditioning with, with that. It's, it's complicated. Um, it's going to take some time to help Benny get over that. You're going to see him in the next few weeks because he's coming home with me for some board and train. And we're going to be working through each of these problems with him and show you the proper way to start to get some behavior modification on this. So be sure to tune in again next week and watch Benny's progress as it unfolds. should be very exciting. Having a doggy dilemma? 
Denise can help. www.denisemazzola.com. Denise Mazzola is a certified professional dog trainer with over 20 years of experience. She specializes in new puppy consultations, rowdy dogs, aggressive dogs, and private lessons. 